our God and our Father. Now it's time to hear a word from you. Father, we thank you for your members. We thank you for the body of Christ. Father, we thank you for all that you have done. Now, Father, I ask that you would just have me to step back and let your Holy Spirit speak in and through my life. Father, let these notes be so simple that even a child may understand it. Let me speak up, speak clear, and sit down and give your praises all to you. Father, if it's anyone in our midst that may not know Jesus Christ, we pray, Father, that they will get to know you. And Father, we'll forever give you the praise. We'll forever give you the glory. And it's for the mighty name of Jesus we do pray and we all say, Amen. Amen. Again, giving all praises to God. Honor to our pastor. Again, Pastor Galen Wright, thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to preach the uncompromising gospel. Amen. And I have told him privately, but then I'm going to say it openly. You have preached an outstanding message. Amen. You have let the Holy Spirit use you on this morning. Amen. And I pray that he will use me as well. Amen. On today. There's a word of God coming out of Hebrews chapter 7. Want to look in Hebrews chapter 7. Well, we'll be looking at verses 23 through 27. Matter of fact, we'll do 28 as well. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 23 through 28. When you have it, say amen. And if you need me to wait, say wait. I hear someone says wait, amen. Amen. Again, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 23. Amen. And the word of God says, And they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by the reason of death. But this man, because he continued forever, have an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he, which is Christ Jesus, is able to save, also save them. Oh, I read that again. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. And I want to read that again. For such an high priest became us who is holy, he's speaking of Jesus, who is harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needed not daily as those high priests like in the Old Testament to offer up sacrifice like those old priests in the Old Testament, first for their own sins and then for the people. For he did once, and he again Jesus, when he is offered up himself, or excuse me, that's for the Old Testament um, priest again, but then in verse 80, 28, it says, For the law make it men high priest, which had infirmities, issues. But the word of the truth, or the oath, which was since the law, made it the son who is consecrated forevermore. That the burden of our message is found in verse 25. It says, For as he is able also to save them, to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. And just for a moment, I'd like to talk to you from the subject, you can depend on Jesus. Amen. You can depend on Jesus. I want us to understand that life is full of changes. 
The seasons change as summer turns into fall. Our bodies change as we move from youth to middle age to senior citizens. And even our friendship change as people pursue different directions in life. And speaking about people, they change as well because we change our mind about what we're going to do or what we are not going to do. We change our mind on what we're going to say and what we don't want to say. And most of us can remember a person who has broken their promise that they made to us. And if the truth be told, we have broken many promises that we made to others. And in the world like this, it can be difficult for people to have confidence in each other. And in the midst of all of these changes, we face from day to day, there is only one we can truly depend on. And his name is Christ Jesus. And his character never change. His beauty never change. Anything that he does for us never change. All of his attributes never change. This means that while everything that may change around us, we can have confidence knowing that our Christ Jesus is the one we read in the Bible never change. And he's the same today as he was yesterday. And he's same today than he is forevermore. See, in the same Savior, he's the same one that is pleading our case to our Heavenly Father. He is exactly the same now as he was back then. He's the same in his nature. He's the same in his character. He's in the same of the way he works with his brothers or his sisters, or the brothers rather and sisters in his name. And he changes not. Y'all, his truth is always true. His love for us is always personal. He's always present when you need him. He's always present when you don't need him. He'll never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Even when you're lonely, you can call on the name of Jesus. Even in the midnight hour, I'm here to tell you, you can call on the name of the Lord. I'm here to tell somebody that Jesus fulfilled his promise from the early beginnings all the way to the end of time. And you know that our God, he lives outside of time. So there will never, ever be any changes. You see, he's the type of God that fulfilled his promise. He has made the, what we read in the Bible that he promised what he is going to give us, he's going to give us. And what he's promised that he's going to do for us, he's going to do for us. Because he never changes his mind. Now, when I talk about changing his mind, I'm talking about the fact foundation of what the word of God says. You know, he, tell, he never changes his mind on that. He never changes his mind on the message that he died on the cross for all of our sins. He'll never change that. He will never change his power, his position, or his practices in our lives. We serve a God that never changed. And we as people sometimes don't follow through our words, but our God always follow through on what he says he would do for us. Yes, you can depend on Jesus. And as we see some evidence in the word of God, when we read this text, we see it is simple and plain. He says, therefore, Christ is also able to save to the uttermost, those who come to God through him, since he always lived to make intercession for us. And just for a little while, i just like to point out some of the reasons why you can depend on Jesus. First of all, the reason why you can depend on Jesus is quite simple. He is able. That's what the word of God says. Jesus is able, and that's the reason why you can depend on him. Notice what the word of God says. He says he is, what, able to save to the uttermost. You see, Jesus can take our impossible and make it possible. i say it again. Jesus can take our impossible and make it possible. Because with Jesus, nobody could ever see God in heaven. Nobody could be saved. Jesus did the impossible. See, Jesus came so that we can have eternal life. And one day we will be with him if we know who he is in our life. And that's why you see the verb is in the sentence. 
Y'all, when you took English class, the word is is a present tense word. It lets us know that Jesus is still in the saving business. And if you want salvation, he is the only one who can give it to you. See, that's the impossible turning into possible. You see, a lot of people got this salvation thing wrong. If you ask the atheist about salvation, he would say there is no God, so there's no need to be saved. But the Bible tells me in Psalms 14 and 1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And if you ask the moralist, he would say, just be a good person and do good for others and you will be saved. But the Bible says in Isaiah 64 and 6, but we are all as unclean things and all of our unrighteousness are like filthy rags. And even if you ask the religiousness, he would say, just do what your church tell you to do and be a good person and you will be saved. But again, I have to back it up with Isaiah 64 and 6. It keeps on popping up in my heart. And even if you ask the legalist, excuse me, y'all, he would say, keep these set of rules and do as you're commanded by your pastor and you will be saved. But I'm reminded of what is said in Romans chapter 3. It lets us know that there is none righteous, no, not one. And even in verse 12, it says, there is none who is good that does, uh, excuse me, there is none who does good, no, not one. But if you really want to know the truth about salvation, ask Paul. He'll tell you, just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou be saved. If you really want to know what salvation is, just ask God. He says, you must be born again. And, if, and the only way you can be born again is that you depend on Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Because the Bible says he is able to save the uttermost. And just when you think it seems like there's no hope in life, just when it seems like there's no hope at all in life, when sin has tied you down to the railroads of hell and Satan and his demons are on the train trying to run you over, here comes Jesus to save the day. Here comes Jesus to save your soul because his blood is more powerful than a locomotive. His blood is faster than a speed and bloody. His love can leap a building in a single bound. All you do if you want salvation, you can look to the sky, but it ain't going to be no bird. You can look to the sky and it ain't going to be no plane. You can look to the sky, it ain't going to be Superman, but you can look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I know they got a lot of superheroes running around today. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the true superhero who can save our soul. He's the one who can bring joy that's set before him. He's the one that endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the Father who is in heaven. He's the one that did the impossible to forgive us of our sins. He's able, y'all, to wash us from our sins. He's able, y'all, to save us from our sins. He's able to come to us in the nick of time. He's there to save us in the time of our trouble. Y'all, he's able to even make us children of God. And how many know that he's able to raise us from the dead at his return? Just ask Jairus. He'll tell you that he's able. Just ask the woman with the the issue of blood she'll tell you that he's able you can even ask me and I'd be glad to tell you that he's able and you can depend on Jesus Christ because he's able to save a wretch like me he's able to touch your soul I can testify that he healed my body when it was sick he's able to do the things that I couldn't do for myself he's able that I could depend on him when I couldn't depend on myself he is the type of Jesus that we need in our life he is the true superhero he He's able to leap our lives over and over again. He's able to wash us from the dirt of sin in our lives. Again, you can depend on Jesus because he's able. But now, not only is he able, but I found out reading this text, he's also available. Again, he's able, but then also he's available. Notice what he said in that same text. It says, all who come unto to God by him. It didn't say some. It didn't say many. But it says all who come unto God by him. Y'all don't be surprised when I say this. Not everybody's going to heaven. <laughs> don't be surprised when I tell you that. Not everybody is going to make it into heaven. All because 
they refuse to accept that Jesus is the only way. Many don't want to acknowledge him as Christ. Many don't want to acknowledge him as God. Many don't want to acknowledge him as the Savior. But in order to come to the Father, you have to go through the Son of the Father. And the good news is that Jesus has made himself available and Christ is always willing to lead people to his father. And Christ is also willing to let people come to him. Y'all, he was available to the children in Matthew chapter 19, verse 13 through 15. He was available to blind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10, verse 46 through 52. Y'all, he was available to Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19, verse 1 through 10. And don't you know that Jesus is available to you and me today? Even if you ne neglect him, he's still available. Even if you reject him, he's still available. You see, you can call on the name of the Lord and he will answer. According to Psalms 91 and 5, 15 rather. See, our Savior is never too busy to hear our call. His power, his presence is always available for you and I. You see, I can call on him, y'all, in the time of my trouble. And at the same time, you can call them just because you want to praise them. But then at the same time, a person can call them because they need salvation. And don't you know when we serve a Savior who's able to answer all of our calls at the same time, you can call them again when you need to praise them. I can call them at the time of my trouble. Another can call them when they need salvation. Don't you know he can answer every call at the same time, at the same hour? Don't matter if you're from Japan or Jerusalem or even Jerusalem. Jamaica, my God can answer at the same time. He's our own time God. Yes, he is. And therefore, he's always available to take your call. He's always available to hand, handle your call. I know the commercials say operators are standing by, but I'm here to tell you that Jesus is standing by and he's waiting to hear your faintest crawl. Y'all, that's the kind of God we serve. He's always available. He's always there to hear our faintest cry. See, Jesus always make himself available to us. So when you need a friend, just call on Jesus. When you need someone to talk to, call on Jesus. When you need somebody you just want to hum at, just call on Jesus. Even in your darkest hours, I'm here to tell you, you can call on Jesus. Even when times are good in your life, just call on the name of the Lord. Even when the roof is leaking from the sky, just call on the name of the Lord. Even when things are driving smooth in your brand new Mercedes, just call on the name of the Lord. Even if you hit the lottery, just still call on the name of the Lord and pay your tithes. Amen. Give God the praise. But call him, and he'll always be there. I'm here to tell you, if you need salvation, you can call upon the name of the Lord. And I'm pretty sure he'll bless your soul. He'll bless your mind. He'll even bless your heart. See, Christ is never too busy. He's always available. Available to change a sinner to a saint. Available to, to help the help. Or help the hopeless or find rather available to help the hopeless and give them hope available to give power to the powerless you can depend on Jesus you can he'll answer your call again I told you you can call him in the morning and you can call him in the evening but I'm here to tell you my mama would testify Jesus is on the main line and you can tell him what you want why did I say that because he's always available pick you up and turn you around. Get you started in the right direction. Yes, just call on Jesus because he's available. And you can depend on the Lord. Because Jesus, again, he's able. Jesus, again, he's available. But I got one more with you and I take my seat. But I want to also let you know that Jesus is alive. All right. All right. Yes, he is. He's able. He's available. But the good news is he's alive. Yes, you can depend on Christ because Christ is alive. You can't say that about Buddha. You can't say that about Muhammad. You can't say that by Confucius. But when you go to their graves, you'll see that they are buried there. But when you go to my Savior's grave, a lot of people will say he's not there. I say that again. You can say that. You can't say that rather about those other gods, lowercase g's false gods, 
But I'm here to tell you, when you go to my Savior's grave, you can't find him there. And if you ask somebody, they say he's not there. You see, every major religion or every other major religion have graves where their followers can go mourn their death. Y'all missed that. Every other major religions have graves where their followers can go and mourn their death. Only Christians have an empty tomb. Our leader, our savior, our author, our finisher, our faith rose from the dead and ascended back to heaven. Hallelujah to the precious Lamb of God. And there today, he's representing us. There today, he's telling others about, well, he's telling the Father about our needs. And as there today, our representative and the guarantee that one day we will be with him as well. That's why he says in John chapter 14, which is one of my favorite scriptures, he says, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Because in my father's house are many mansions. And guess what, y'all? I'm going to prepare a place for you. If you what? Believe in me. I'm going to prepare a place for you if you believe in me. And ever since he died and rose from the grave, he lives right now sitting on the right hand of the Father. See, our Savior has finished the unworked or the unfinished work we could not do. Y'all, again, he did the impossible. You see, Jesus is our great high priest, and he's greater than any, any earthly priest. You see, all earth earthly priests had to die. They had sins to confess themselves. Day ministry ended. But oh, when you think about Jesus Christ, this is a reason why you can depend on him. Because Jesus Christ is the great high priest. When all other priests died, their ministry ended. But when my Savior died and rose again, his ministry began. Let me say that again. When all old priests or other priests died, their ministry ended. But when Jesus died, his ministry began. Because he died for all of our sins. But then he rose from the grave. And now he's praying for us beside the Father. And if I use my sanctified mind, y'all believe that Jesus is proclaiming us as the children of the Father. He's protecting us with his amazing blood that he shed upon the cross. And when we sin as believers, y'all, he's pleading our case. And again, it's not the fact that God is about to slam the door in our face. And it's not the fact that the Father is mad at us. It's not the fact that the Father is supposed to destroy us when we sin or is he or he's about to close the door of salvation. But it's the fact that I believe with my mind that the Holy Ghost is telling me I believe this is what's going on. That the fact is the son is saying to the father that the account is paid in full, father. I am their redeemer. I am their salvation. Look at me, daddy. I paid it all. You remember, father, how they scandalized my name. You remember how they blindfold me and hit me in the face. You remember how they asked me and spit up on me and asked me who was it that hit me. You remember, father, how they plucked out my beard and put thorns on my head. You remember, Father, how they beat me with a whip that was full with metals and bones at the end. Father, you remember how I had so much sin on me, but I knew no sin. You remember, Father, that I took the sins of the world up on my shoulders when I carried that cross up on God got this hill. You seen it, Father, how they hung me high. You seen it, Father, how they stretched me wide. You knew, Father, when they was going to press me in my side. You knew, Father, when they was going to place nails in my hands and nails in my feet. You seen it, Father, because you had to forsake me when the time I needed you most. And that's why, Father, I said, Father, why has thou forsaken me? But I'm glad you did it because I loved your children so much. You remember, Father, when I gave up the ghost, I said, it was finished. And truly enough, I know that I am the high priest. I am the perfect sacrifice. And I paid it all for him, Father. So look at me, Daddy, when they make a mistake. Look at the blood that was shed up on the cross. I did it for them. 
I am their redeemer. And again, I don't know who made the payment. I know who made the payment, but I don't know who the payment went to. I don't know if it went to the father or I don't know it went to Satan. But the one thing I do know that the payment is paid in full. And therefore, I know that I'm redeemed by the blood of the lamb. And that's what Jesus is saying to the father because the father knows his son and his son gave his life. And so since he is alive, we have the assurance for the future. See, y'all, we don't have to face temptation alone. We don't have to face trials alone. We don't have to face troubles alone. When we stumble, he is there to pick us up. When we sin, he's there pleading our case. And somebody I'm trying to tell you on today, all you have to do is just depend on the Lord. The Bible says trust in the Lord. And that's what you ought to do. You ought to trust in the Lord yeah. and lean not to your own understanding. Yeah. Because when you read the Bible, sometimes you just don't understand why Christ did it. And that's when that song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, that saved the wretch like me. It, it sounds so good that you don't even understand it. But you're glad that it happened. And that's why I think about the goodness of Jesus. And that's the reason why I can depend on my Savior because again he is alive he is able and then he is available thank you for your time and I pray that God will bless you real good again you can depend on Jesus